Chapter 5 After flying for hours upon hours, Rondo spotted the wide expanse of lights on the horizon. He realized this was the unversed town that the guard was talking about. It was bright and sparkly, as if the midnight sky traded places with the ground. Ahead of him, Sidron shot up a red signal spark, which indicated it was time to land. Rondo looked down and was just able to make out a river running through a moderately forested area. The three of them eased down on their zephyrs, stopping right next to the river. They each collapsed their staffs and stowed them in their robes. Sidron created a ball of light which floated inches above his hand, and illuminated an area several feet around them. This is stream Marcine crashed in? Vargas asked. Sidron took the case off his back and laid it down on the ground. The exact same. He undid both latches and tossed the lid upwards, revealing the scouter eyes and all their unpleasantness. Rondo tried to avert his gaze, but found himself inexplicably fixated on the dreadful contraptions. True to their namesake, they were built to resemble eyes. They had a gold shell, which housed a fully rotating crystal ball about the size of Rondo's fist. The ball was able to move freely within the shell, surveying similar to how a real eye worked. In the back was a propeller-like fin that allowed it to fly and hover. Next to each scouter was a small jewel, which was supposed to be inserted into the socket in the ball. Sidron grabbed the purple one in the middle. Go on, take one. With some hesitation, Rondo grabbed the green jewel on the right, leaving Vargas with the blue one. They held them tightly, each concentrating hard to infuse it with his aura. Once they were done, they placed their jewels into the eyes. Here goes. Immediately, the contraption sprung to life, causing Rondo to jump back in shock. He stumbled and fell onto the ground. Despite the hard landing, he kept his focus on the eyes, which flew out of the case and floated in midair, their new pupils scanning the area around them. Sidron snickered. Ah, oh, what's the matter? They give you a scare? He had a teasing smirk on his face. Shut up, Rondo said, getting up and dusting himself off. You know I don't like those things. As if in response, the green-eyed scouter floated right up to him, hovering just inches from his face, making a steady humming sound. Well, it certainly seems like you, said Sidron. Listen, it's even purring. Rondo watched the scouter out the corner of his vision as it orbited him, inspecting him up and down. It'd be almost cute if it weren't so creepy. He was stuck with it now. It was bonded to him through his aura, and would seek out the auras of other witches. Anyways, not much we can do about it, Sidron continued. We have a job to do, so we might as well get used to them. His scouter was behind him, peeking over his shoulder. Vargas appeared especially disturbed by his drone, trying to avoid eye contact with it. Say, uh, didn't that guard say something about the river running through an unversed town? Sidra nodded. That's why we're splitting up. It allows us to cover more ground while staying out of sight. Here's what we're going to do. He held up three fingers, spreading them out as wide as possible. We'll branch out from this spot, moving on foot. I'll head straight down the middle. While well, Vargas, you take the left path. Ron, that leaves you with the path on the right. Move quickly and quietly. Last thing we need is for some nosy unversed to spot us. Our scouters will be circling us, scanning the surrounding area. If they sense anything, they'll know where to find us, no matter how far away they are. That's what disturbs me the most, said Rondo. Sidron cleared his throat, clearly not appreciating the interruption. Your eye picks up something. You signal the rest of us and we'll come find you. No telling how long we'll be out here, so you're on your own for food and shelter. Got it? You betcha, Vargas said, pointing to the trunk on his back. Understood, Rondo added. I should have brought something along, too. We all clear on what we're supposed to do? Sidron asked. The others nodded, and he responded with a nod of his own. Okay, let's go find Marcin and get that book back. The three of them each went their separate ways, with their eye drones falling close behind. Hang on, Marcin. We're coming to get you. Though I wish it were under better circumstances. Just stay safe.
no matter what, stay safe.